Amen. Amen. All right. The title of the sermon this evening is Tell It to Jesus. Tell It to Jesus. I'm going to be preaching about the subject of not worrying or not being anxious. I want to focus here in Matthew chapter number 6, beginning in verse number 25. So we're going to read... Uh, a large portion of this once again, and then I want to uh, particularly, even more so, uh, home in on a couple of verses there at the end. Look at verse number 25. It says this, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, Neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Verse 29. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the, the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek." For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34, focus here. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now Matthew chapter number 5 through Matthew chapter number 7 is what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. It's where Jesus goes up and he, he preaches one of, his, one of his very first sermons. It's also one of the most famous sermons really that Jesus has preached. There's all different types of famous quotations and famous passages. The Lord's Prayer that's taken from this. Of course previous to this we have the Beatitudes, right? And really what's in the Beatitudes is a lot of what's taught all through 5, 6, and 7. Those chapters in the Sermon on the Mount. And it is basic virtues of life. There are a lot of little nuggets of truth that he'll just hit on very shortly that are very deep and they're very profound and they're very helpful for us in life. And right here at the end of Matthew chapter number 6, he gets to the core of one of the main problems that mankind has. You know, uh, if you were able to add up all the amount of time in your life that you just sat, sat around worrying or being concerned or fretting or contemplating about how something was going to turn out, I bet it would be a large portion of your life. I bet you would be surprised by the amount of time, the amount of minutes, the amount of hours that you actually spent sitting down and being concerned about something. Now, I don't know whether this is true or not, but I've heard that they've done studies. I've heard this from a few different people, that they've done studies on the things that people worry about and the things that people spend their time being concerned about. And actually, only like one, less than 1% is what they said. Less than 1% of the things that you concern yourself with and you worry about actually come to fruition. Has anybody else heard that before? I've heard that many times in my life. So I don't know if that to be true specifically to that statistic, but I know just in personal experience, if I just reflect upon my life and all the things that I concern about and worry about just on a daily basis, it almost never comes to fruition. It almost never comes to pass in the way that I was concerned or worried about even in general. And when we look in the Bible, there are many, many different passages where we are taught not to worry and not to concern ourselves. Right here we are given the reason why and it is because we have a God in heaven that takes care of us and that worries about us and, and or that, that takes care of us and, and, uh, uh, and that we should entrust all things into his hands. Let me put it that way. I want you to look at what are the core problem of why people worry about things is actually told to us here in Matthew chapter number 6. Look at verse number 30. He says, Wherefore if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? And then he says this, O ye of little faith. Now the reason why we spend our time worrying and the reason why we spend our time being concerned about something or maybe just fretting ourselves about whether you know we're going to get something that we need 
is because of a lack of faith in the Lord very often. Now right here he even goes on to explain that the things, these things that, that a lot of people worry about it, which are worldly possessions, physical possessions, they're not things that we as children of God should spend our time worrying about in the first place. He said, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. The nations of the world, they seek after these things, saying, you as children of God, you should not be concerned of these things. We have much more important things to be concerned about, right? It's why he tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What we should be focusing on in our, in our life is our spiritual walk with God. Our spiritual state and our spiritual relationship that we have with God currently at the moment. And that God promises that He will give us the things that we need. He will take care of us. And He... So if we were to eliminate, let's just say this from the beginning, if we were to eliminate all of those other things, all of the things that the Gentiles seek after, right? The nations of the world, all those that, that are the unsaved, right? The, those that are not the children of God. If we eliminated all the things that God says they seek after, how many, how many real things do you have to concern yourself with or worry about in your life? Almost nothing. If you really start to put it into perspective and you look at, hey, what are the things that I concern myself with on a daily basis? What are the things that I actually worry about on a day-to-day -day basis? I bet a lot of them end up being the things the Gentiles seek after. I, let, I bet a lot of them end up being the things that God says that He'll provide for you if you need them. And hey, stop spending your time thinking about these things. You know why? Because God wants us to concern ourselves with righteousness. God wants us to concern ourselves with God's Word and serving Him. Those are the things that we should be spending our time on. But even still... You know, we live in this world, right? We live in this world and we are human beings. And there is going to be concern. There are going to be worries. That's why Jesus is preaching this to us in the first place. That's why he's telling us this. There are ups and downs in life and we are only human, right? The, the book of Ecclesiastes tells us that there is a time to weep. And there is a time to laugh. There is a time to mourn. And there is a time to dance, right? There are ups and and there are downs in this life. And as human beings, there are going to be times when you are going to find yourself worrying and you are going to find yourself being concerned about the things of this world. So this sermon is, going to, is meant to be very practical for you to help you to not go, you know, spend your life <clears throat> on a day-to-day -day basis just being concerned or worried, but rather to put more faith in the Lord, to put more trust into God's hands. I want you to turn now with me to Ecclesiastes chapter number 11. Ecclesiastes chapter number 11. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter number 11. I want you to look. We're going to jump around here a few times in the uh, Old Testament. Uh, look at some, some verses here for a moment. Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, verse number 1. We'll see this being taught. Almost the same exact concept here. Uh, kind of hidden in a parable. Uh, chapter number 11, verse number 1. It says, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. So it's basically the virtue if you give to others, you know, uh, it'll be given back to you eventually, right? Look at verse number 2. It says, Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth, so he's saying, you know, there's certain works that we need to do here and there, right? And and because uh, you never know what's going to happen. So you need to basically, it's the concept, you need to make sure that all your bases are covered, right? But keep reading what it says in verse 3. <clears throat> if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Now look at verse 4. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. So what the Bible's teaching in these, these few verses here is a, is a concept, number one, he tells you, hey, there's a, there, you, know, you need to give a portion to, like it says, seven and also to eight. So there's work that needs to be done. You need to go out and you need to work. You need to, you need to sow your seed, right? You need to go out and you need to plow when it's time to plow, right? You need to go out and, and the, this is the way that the majority of people would get their income. This is how they ate, this is how they fed themselves. Kind of what we saw about the, uh, what, the things that the Gentiles seek after, food and raiment. These are things that are necessities for our life. And then he tells us in verse number 3, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves. What's that talking about? 
It's, it's talking about being concerned on whether or not after you sow your seed, whether it's going to bring forth any food. Being concerned whether or not after you go out and you do your work and you give a portion to seven or also to eight, whether or not you're actually going to get a return on what you have done. And what you, on the work that you've put in. Then it says this, And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, notice what it says, there it shall be. What's the point of that? It's saying that when the tree falls, it's going to fall like it says, either north, south, whatever you want to say, east, west, and you're not going to be able to stop it. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. And if you were to observe your life, the majority of things that you concern yourself with and maybe even worry about, a lot of the things are things that are out of your hands. They're things that you cannot control in the first place. I want you to go to Psalm chapter number 37. Psalm chapter number 37. Luke chapter number 12 verse number 25. This is a parallel of what we were reading in Matthew 6 just a moment ago. And it says this, and which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye, then be, if ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? So what he's saying, of course, is, you know, who can add one cubit to his stature? You know, it talks about, uh, you know, you can't make one hair on your head either white or black, it says, I believe, in one of the other, in Matthew, I believe it is, Matthew 6, where we were. So you can't, these are things that are out of your hands. They're out of your control, right? If the, like it said, if the tree falls to the north or it falls to the, to the south, that's where it's going to lay. That's where it's going to rest. That's where it's going to fall. It, the point is that there are many things that are out of your hands. There are many things in life that you cannot control yourself. And what we need to do is we need to not concern ourselves with the things of life. We need to not concern ourselves with uh, the things that the Gentiles seek after. Food, raiment, you know, uh, uh, shelter, all of these different, these worldly physical possessions. We need to live our lives and do that which is right. We need, to, we need to give a portion to seven and a portion to eight. We need to go to work and we need to do what God wants us to do. We need to go to work and we need to go to church and we need to live our lives righteously and, and walk the path that God has for us. Do the, you know, keep the commandments of the Lord and God will provide for us. And not spend our time concerned and worried about all the things of this world or all the things of this life. Well, we'll read there quickly in Psalm chapter number 37. Psalm chapter number 37. We're going to look at verse number 1. Psalm chapter number 37. Just verse number 1. Right there in the beginning we see the commandment. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. I want you to turn now. Let's go to the New Testament. 1 Peter chapter number 5. So the same concept of fretting yourself. What is, don't fret yourself about evildoers. What does that mean? If someone is doing you wrong or they're doing harm to you, don't sit there and worry about it. You know, fret not thyself. That's what it talks about in, uh, in, in Matthew. Uh, uh, it uses a little bit different language in Matthew chapter number 6. It he tells us, take no thought for the morrow. You know, for tomorrow. He's saying, don't worry about the things that are going to come in the future. Take no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Then he tells you this. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What does that mean? Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. He's basically telling you that there's enough bad things in every day that take place. Sufficient means enough. He's going ahead and he's telling you, hey, bad things are going to happen. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. But you know what? Don't sit there and worry about it. Don't sit there and concern yourself about it. Why? Because you can't change it. You know, you need to just give a portion to seven and also to eight. You need to do the things that you need to do. You need to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and not sit around and concern yourself and worry about things that are out of your hand. Now, what are some of the things that we can concern ourselves about? Maybe our jobs. Maybe we can concern ourselves with getting a raise. Maybe we can concern ourselves with getting a promotion. Maybe we can concern ourselves with buying a new house or, you know, whether or not our child is going to, you know, uh, be accepted into the piano class or whatever it may be. You know, we can concern ourselves with the things of this world and we feel like that's important at that moment, right? You may feel like, you know, if maybe you're trying to move to another home. There are all different types of things that a person could sit around and worry about. Hey, our lease, you know, is getting ready to be up. Where are we going to move to? 
Take no thought for the things. That, now, I'm not telling you that you don't need to plan for stuff. You know, but you need to do is you need to give a portion to seven and also to eight. You need to have all your bases covered, but don't sit around and concern yourself and worry about the things of this world. You know, all, all, when, in the ultimate picture, in the big picture, when you stop and you take a look at your life, how much does it really matter? Whether you move today or you move tomorrow, whether you live on the east side of Jacksonville, the west side of Jacksonville, the north side, the south side, does it really matter? Think you're going to care in 10 years? Think it's really going to matter? You're really going to care if, it, you know, if that one weekend that you had planned with your wife didn't go just right, maybe if you had some kind of date night or whatever it may be? Do you think those types of things matter that much, really? I mean, of course we need to, you know, I'm not trying to belittle, you know, every little area of life, but in the big picture, those are not the things that should be most important to us. Those are not the things that we should be, you know, uh, uh, primarily concerned with. You know what you should be concerned with? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. We should, be, we should be concerned with how we are living our lives spiritually. And all the other stuff that have to do with you know, uh, uh, fleshly, worldly things, just put that into God's hands and stop concerning yourself with it and stop worrying. The majority of things that you worry about are not, are not spiritual things, are they? If you stop and you really examine your life and you were able to put all the concerns that you had last week, just last week, into categories. Do you think that the majority of what you were worrying about or being concerned about would go into a spiritual category or a worldly category? It would go into a category of things that are worldly, wouldn't it? That's just, that's why Jesus is preaching this to us. That's why there's so much about this in the Bible. But what we need to do is we need to put our trust in the Lord and worry about the things that are spiritual. So I had you turn, did you go to 1 Peter? So let's look at 1 Peter chapter number 5. We'll see this all throughout the Bible where God is uh, giving us an admonition. He's giving us advice to, uh, for Him to be our fortress, if you will. That He's going to be the one that, uh, that takes away our cares and takes away our worries. <clears throat> look at uh, 1 Peter chapter number 5. Look at, uh, look at verse number 6 and 7 together. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Then it says in verse number 7, Casting all your care upon him, and it says, For he careth for you. Now, the word care is not you know, uh, used exactly the same way that it is in the Bible today. It definitely, you know, we use the word care similarly, but it's not exactly the same. Uh, when, it, when it speaks of care here, it is speaking of like thought. And that's really what it means. When we're telling someone to be careful, we're telling them to be thoughtful, right? We're telling them, hey, think about what you're doing. Care about what you're doing as in think about it, right? So when it talks about here, casting all your care upon Him, you know what he's saying is, all the things that you think about and all the things that you worry about daily, cast those things upon Him. You know, give those worries unto Him. Now, doesn't that make perfect sense when you think of, hey, the majority of things that you worry about in this life are what? Food, raiment, shelter. Things that are worldly, aren't they? And what did He promise in Matthew chapter number 6? You know, God clothes the grass of the field. So isn't He going to close you much better? So wouldn't it make perfect sense that the, the worries and the cares that you have of this life, God already promised that He would fulfill those things for you. So just go ahead and cast those cares upon Him. Just, you know, in your mind... You should put all of the faith and all of your trust, obviously in all areas of our life, but all the faith and all the trust on His shoulders. Knowing that if you, like we saw, give a portion of seven and also to eight, He will provide those things for you. He will make sure that you do not go wanting. He says, casting all your care upon Him, and then it tells you this, for He careth for you. Notice that. Because He cares for you. All the worries and the things that you have, it's saying to cast them upon Him, put that burden upon Him, because He worries about you, He cares about you. I want you to go with me to, uh, actually let's go to, I'm going to kind of skip, I'm going to skip around here because it's something that's more relevant to this. Go to Matthew chapter number 11, verse number 20, 28, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter number 11, verse number 28, notice how this ties in with this. <clears throat> so it says, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Look here at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 11, verse number 28. <clears throat> Matthew chapter number 11 verse number 28 tells you this Jesus speaking come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and he says and I will give you rest 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now this can apply in a couple of different ways. Of course it can apply to salvation. It can apply to how easy salvation is, and how salvation is, is light. It's very easy, right? It's not difficult. It's, it's very simple to be saved. But not only that, it can apply to the help that God can give us all through our, throughout, excuse me, our lives. You know, we have, you know, the, the problems that we feel like, uh, that we deal with, uh, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives really aren't that big. Especially when you look at the God that we serve and how easy it is for God to resolve all of these problems for us. I want you to turn to, uh, go to Psalm chapter number 55. Psalm chapter number 55. <clears throat> Psalm chapter number 55. Then we're going to go to Proverbs 12, 25 after that. <clears throat> Psalm chapter number 55, verse number 22. We'll see this again. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So we see this exact same statement that's, that's used there in 1 Peter chapter number 5 almost. It's, it's almost uh, certainly a quotation there in 1 Peter 5, 7. Where he talks about casting your care upon him for he careth for you, right? Here we see, cast thy burden upon the Lord. So this is all throughout the Bible. Where any troubles or any problems that we're having, we shouldn't sit there and just concern ourselves with it. You know what you should do? You should tell it to Jesus. You should take it to Jesus. When you start to get overwhelmed with a problem, or you start to get overwhelmed, you're finding yourself just constantly sitting around and just sitting about, sitting around and just thinking about this issue all day where it's just fretting you in your mind. You know what you need to do? You need to go to Jesus in prayer. You need to pray to Him about it. Confess whatever sins that you have in your life. And you need to ask Him to help you with this issue. And you need to, you need to just uh, uh, put all things into His hands. Take that burden that you have, and these worries that you have, and these concerns that you have, and just cast it upon Him. Think about that. Just all the weight that is, that is weighing you down. What is a burden? A burden is something that is heavy, right? It's hard to carry. That's what that means. A burden is something that is hard to carry. You know what you can do? You just take it and pray to Him about whatever problem that you're having, and just lift it up off of your shoulders and give it to Him. That's what Jesus says to do. He says, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So if you feel like you've gotten yourself to a point where you just can't handle the problem anymore, it's just too much for you, and I'm not talking about you wor worrying yourself about something that's maybe even sinful. If you're being covetous or whatever, then you need to get that right in your heart. You, know, you need to uh, uh, repent of that. If it's some sort of covetous, but maybe a legitimate problem that you're going through in your life, maybe financially, whatever it, it, it may be, you know what you need to do? You need to tell it to Jesus. That's what you need to do. You need to do what you can do daily. Go to work, serve God, come to church, go soul winning, and you know what you need to do? Stop thinking about it. Tell it to Jesus. Stop worrying about it. Cast, casting all your care upon Him. Why? Because He careth for you, for He careth for you. Isn't that nice to know that you have somebody who's the all-powerful God, just this guy that's the all-powerful God of the universe, that He can handle your problem? There's no, there's no, there is no problem. You know, th these things can kind of be cliche sometimes when people say it, but when you really understand the concept, there is no issue in your life or any problem in your life that's too big for Him. There's nothing too hard for Him to handle at any time to be able to help you with. And if you are willing to go to work and, and, and to do what you need to do on a daily basis, I keep referring to that because that was the context of Ecclesiastes 11. But if you do what you are meant to do, do for God, what God has for you, you walk worthy of the, of the uh, convocation of which you are called, like it talks about in Ephesians, then God will bless you. God will take care of your problems. He clothes the, gra the grass of the field. Look at the lilies, right? He says, shall he not so much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? What's the problem? It's because you're not trusting in him. Because you're not taking the problem and giving it to him. Now, the person, I want you to think about that concept of, well, something that you are just sitting around and concerned about and worried about, that's obviously something that you have not given to the Lord. That's obviously not a problem that you've just handed over to him. Do you know why you're worried about it and you're concerned about it? It's because you feel like it's your burden. Because you feel like it's something that is in your hands still. 
But what you need to do as long as, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I want to keep saying this, as long as you're doing what you need to do, as long as you are doing on a daily basis of what God has for you, and you are, you are seeking first the kingdom of God, give that burden unto the Lord. Cast that burden upon God. Whatever problem that you have, He will deal with it. He will help you to get through it. You know what that does? That takes faith. That's why he says, oh, ye of little faith. You lack faith when you're not able to do that. When you feel like you have to put it in your hands, that's the same, it's the same concept even of salvation. Because they're, you know, a person that's worked salvation, they feel like they have to do it. They're scared just to say, hey, I just have to trust all in him. But it's the same concept just in your day-to-day -day Christian life. You need to seek ye first the kingdom of God and then just take that burden, cast it, take it off of your shoulders, put it upon his shoulders. He asked you for it. He, he said, give it to me. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. And he says, and I will give you rest. Amen. He says, cast your burden upon, cast your cares upon him. And then he even tells you, because he cares for you, for he careth for you. Think about that. I want you to go to, uh, go with me now. Flip over to the book of Proverbs. We'll see this again. Proverbs chapter number 12. Proverbs chapter number 12. <clears throat> <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 12, verse number 25. It says this. We'll see the, 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 what this can do to a person. It says, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Now, how does that tie in with that? Well, heaviness is like a burden. And you may not realize it. And it, you know, it may not be the seriousness of depression. But you may, may not realize the anxiety and, and the worry that's going on in your life at some times. And really the heaviness that it can bring. You know what it does? Like it says here, it can make your heart to stoop. It can actually you know, uh, put you into a depressed state. If you sit there and you concern yourself and worry yourself about problems in your life, you're not helping yourself, you're hurting yourself. And you're going to continually go downhill. You're going to continually go downhill. I want to go to the New Testament. Go to Luke chapter number 10. Go to Luke chapter number 10. <clears throat> and, if, and if you even stop and think about it as well, it's just like, uh, what are you doing? What are you helping? You know, uh, I understand, hey, there's a problem in your life and you're trying to resolve the issue. And you sit down, hey, let's systematically figure out how we need to fix this, right? We're going to, you know, uh, uh, dismantle this problem and then we're going to fix the problem. That's totally different than sitting down and worrying about something. Do you understand the difference? That's entirely different than being anxious about a problem that's about to possibly take place. And most of the time in, your, in our lives does it. Those are two entirely different things. So yes, there may be a part for you to do. Again, give a portion of seven and also to eight. There may be something for you to do. Take care of that. But then after you sow your seed, then you just need to step back and just give the burden to the Lord. Step back, tell it to Jesus, and then stop concerning yourself with it. And you know what you need to do? You need to put your faith in Him that He'll take care of you. I want you to look at Luke chapter 10, verse number uh, 41. We'll see, that, you know, this is something that men struggle with this. You know, uh, men will have problems with this, but... It, uh, this is obvious that women have more of a proclivity just to be anxious and worried about things. It's just the, na the different natures between men and women. You know, women struggle more with you know, worrying about certain things and being anxious uh, about certain things in life. Uh, I want you to look here at Luke chapter number 10, <clears throat> verse number, we'll see this in verse number, look at verse 40. But Martha was cumbered. Now what does it mean to be cumbered? What does cumbered mean? Like if something is cumbersome. Burden, exactly. You notice that? It, it's like a burden. If something's cumbersome, it's heavy, or it's, a bur it's hard, right? So it says, But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, watch this, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. So one thing we can learn, and we can see this in life, is that women have, like I said, more of an inclination or proclivity to these types of things, of being anxious and worried and cumbered about with things. Also, we can see from this, again, backing that up, about it being a, an actual burden that is upon someone when they're, when they're, when they're bothered by it. 
And we see that that is being careful, and then it also says troubled. This is the exact same concept that was taught in Matthew 6. Being worried about things, being careful about things. And what types of things are we worried about most of the time? Is what she's worried about something that's just like, this is super important? No, he actually explains to her, hey, that's not the most important thing. She chose that which is needful. And what did she choose? Think about Matthew 6. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Right? So she chose the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Right? Not to say that they shouldn't have served at all, but you can get your priorities sometimes screwed up is what you can do. You can sometimes get your priorities backwards is what you can do. And right here what we see is her being worried and burdened and, 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 and it's, it's to the point where it's weighing her down. And she's troubled and she's probably frantic, right? And she's saying, hey, get her to help me. But it's not something that she should be worrying about. Why? She has, she has her priorities in a mess. I want you to go to... Uh, I want you to go to Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 22. Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 22. <clears throat> the, worry, the opposite of being worried and anxious about something, the opposite of Martha's attitude is the attitude of peace. The attitude of peace. Now, what, gr what greater peace can you have than knowing that God will take care of all your problems? Anything that... that you know, steps in your way and in your life from here on out, God promises that He'll handle it. And that He'll take care of any problems. If you do what He asks you to do, you do the things that you are supposed to do and you're called to do, God promises He'll take care of it. Shouldn't that bring peace to us? Amen. Shouldn't that bring peace in your lives, knowing that, that any burden and any trouble and any issue, God says, hey, just bring it to me. Think about that. Any problem that you have, no matter how big or how heavy, he just says, just, just bring it to me. Just bring it to me. Once you look in Galatians, like I said, Galatians chapter number 5. Notice, uh, we're going to look at this quickly and then we'll, we're going to uh, go to the Old Testament again. A couple other passages. Uh, <clears throat> one more passage actually in the Old Testament. Galatians chapter number 5. I want you to notice that one of the fruits of the Spirit is actually peace. Notice the, what's here in, in Galatians chapter number 5 verse number 22. The things that are mentioned. <clears throat> but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and then notice also faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So notice when a person is walking in the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit actually, a couple of them that are, re that are uh, pertinent to what we're talking about right now, at least three, <clears throat> are joy, peace, and faith. Go to Isaiah chapter number 26. So joy, peace, and faith. <clears throat> <clears throat> so when we're walking in the Spirit, when we're seeking first the kingdom of God, and we're not worrying and not being cumbered about with the things of this life, the Bible says that we'll have peace. Why can we have peace? Because once you pray to God, and you have faith that He's going to take care of all those things, your worries and your problems are gone, my friend. Because I believe He really will do that. Once they're given to Him, they're taken care of. He's going to deal with these things. <clears throat> Look at, uh, like I said, Isaiah chapter number 26, verse number 3. It says this, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Now what's perfect mean? It means complete. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. And then it says this, Whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Notice how that's worded. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. That's the exact opposite of a person that sits around worrying about other things, isn't it? Notice how that's worded. He tells you, I'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind stays on me. If your mind's on me at all times. Why? Because, and then it tells you at the very end, because he trusteth in thee. Why can we just put our mind on him? Because any problems or any issues that come up in life, he says, give them to me. Give that problem to me. Give that burden to me and I'll take care of it. And I trust him that he will... So when I give it to him, hey, my hands are clean of it. I'm done. He's going to deal with that. He's going to deal with that for me. Go to uh, John chapter number 14, verse number 27. John chapter number 14, verse number 27. <clears throat> John chapter number 14, verse number 27. Uh, 
<clears throat> says this, I want you to notice the different type of peace. Like he said, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on, on thee because he trusteth in thee. Look at John chapter number 14, verse number 27. He says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And then he says, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We can have a peace that the world can never have. We can have a peace of mind that the, the unsaved man can never have. I can't imagine having issues and problems in my life and nowhere to go. And feeling like every burden I have to take care of. That's where the world is. So imagine how blessed we are that our God tells us, the God of the universe tells you, any problem you have, bring it to me and I'll take care of it. Any issue you have in life, just lay it upon my back and upon my shoulders and I'll take care of it. Flip over to John 16 now. John 16, we'll see this again. Verse number 33. <clears throat> These things have I spoken unto you. Watch what he says next. That in me ye might have peace. Of, you know, it goes on, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Watch this. I have overcome the world. So where does our peace come from? It comes from Christ. It comes from our faith, our trust in the Lord. That's where it comes from. Go to uh, Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 4. See this once more, how we have a different type of peace than the world could ever have. It's a perfect peace. Look at Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Verse 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, watch this. Be careful for nothing. What does that mean? Don't worry about anything. That's what that means. To be careful for nothing means not, stop worrying about things. Stop worrying about things. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. You know what that means? It means this. Tell it to Jesus. It means any problems that you have, you stop worrying about it, but just make your request known unto God. And notice what the result will be. Verse 7, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. Watch this again. Through Christ Jesus. You know what happens? We get weighed down with the burdens and the problems and the cares of this life. You get anxious about it. And you know what you need to do? You need to tell it to Jesus. You need to make your request name known unto Him. You need to take your care. You need to cast it upon Him. Cast your burden upon Him. Like Jesus told you to. He's telling you to do this. And you know what happens? You receive a peace that passes all understanding. A peace the world can never have. A peace that the world will never understand. That you can just... I have someone that there is no problem that's too big for Him. Whatever I'm dealing with in my life, He tells me to give it to Him. And He says, I'll take care of it. And that's the result is it says the peace of God which passeth all understanding. You can't even understand this peace. And it says, shall keep your hearts and minds. Where? Through Christ Jesus. Where did Jesus say that we found peace? He said, in me you shall have peace. In the world we'll have tribulation, he says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's where we find our, our true Peace. We'll end in Psalm chapter number 94, verse number 17. Psalm chapter number 94, verse number 17. <clears throat> it says in verse number 17, Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, my foot slippeth, watch what he says, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. Verse 19, in the multitude of my thoughts. So what's he talking about? All the things that I'm thinking about, the multitude of my thoughts. It says, within me, thy comforts delight my soul. He's talking about all the thoughts that I have in my mind, and the multitude of my thoughts within me. All the thoughts that I have, the one thought of casting all of my burden upon you, knowing that you'll deliver me and that you'll help me, he said, that delights my soul. 
the, the, the way to get true peace, a peace that passes all understanding, is to stop spending your life concerning yourself and worrying and being careful and troubled about all the burdens and all the problems of this world that ultimately almost all the time don't matter at all. Seek ye, seek ye uh, uh, the Lord in His righteousness. Seek God in His righteousness. That's the things that we need to be worried about. And then any problem that we do have, we need to tell it to Jesus and step back and have faith that He will take care of it. Now let me give you just this, uh, this quick uh, um, uh, uh, disclaimer. Obviously, if you're living in sin in a certain area in your life, you're not going to just go and tell it to Jesus and continue living that sin in your life. That's not how it works. I'm talking about the problems and the worries of everyday life, right? Whatever it may be. Money, you know, food, whatever it is. Maybe health, whatever it is in life. Maybe you, you, know, you get diagnosed someday with some horrible sickness or disease. You know what you need to do? Is that something you can help? Can, you, you can, 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 can any of you, you know, add a cubit to your stature? Can you heal yourself of some disease? Can you make one hair white or black? You know, the, you know uh, pro probability wise, a few people in here are going to get cancer one day. It's just statistics of America, you know? And when you get that diagnosis, do you know what most people do? They sit there and they worry themselves. And this is, I preached a sermon about dealing with depression. Now obviously depression is down the road, but you know the first step to depression is this continual worrying and anxiousness about something. And having real problems that present themselves in your life, that poke their cell, their, its head up in your life of, of, of a disease or maybe a sickness someone else has, a family member, a child, whatever it may be. Real problems in life happen, okay? You know what you need to do? You need to not sit there and just worry about it. You need to tell it to Jesus. Give a portion to seven and also to eight. Do the things that you're called to do. Seek ye the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He will give you the perfect peace and just trust in Him. And whatever happens, happens. Either way, you can't help it. If the Lord gave you this for whatever reason, that's the, you know, there's nothing you, you do what you can do and it's out of your hands. You give it to Him and step back and have faith in Him and whatever happens, happens. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you.